good evening and welcome to the latest uh, video uh, live on Facebook talking to the local superintendents uh, across West Mercia and tonight uh, we'll be focusing on South Worcestershire. So um, the eagle-eyed amongst you will, uh, will realise that I'm not in an office, I'm truly mobile tonight having had uh, some travel difficulties so uh, I am live from my uh, car, you'll be pleased to know I'm safely parked and in the passenger seat but uh, the wonders of modern technology mean that we can carry on nonetheless. So as Police and Crime Commissioner um, some of my central role is to do with holding West Mercia Police to account for the service that our community receives. Um, I provide the budget and the funding for policing. I also set the strategic direction via my West Mercia, uh, Safer West Mercia plan and all of that is done um, with the views of the public in mind and uh, um, uh, normally uh, during the summer months uh, Tracy and I and my colleagues um, supported by West Mercia teams, local policing teams would be out at a number of summer events uh, but because of the extraordinary times that we find ourselves in all those events aren't happening so we want to make sure we can still hear the voice of the public and indeed ensure that those local issues are discussed so uh, we are running a series of uh, Facebook live events and tonight is, is the fifth one that we are, are running. So um, uh, if I do some introductions, um, uh, if I ask uh, Steph to introduce herself first and uh, a little bit about her background. Good evening, uh, my name is Superintendent Steph Brighton, I'm the local policing commander for South Worcestershire local policing area and that covers the areas of Worcester, Malvern, uh, Upton, Droitwich, Evesham and Pershaw. Um, I had this position since the 6th of January this year uh, and prior to that I've worked in a huge range of departments and locations within policing and next week I will celebrate my 26 years service with West Mercia Police. My other hats that I have uh, as well as this is I am a tactical firearms commander and a public order and public safety silver commander. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Steph. And uh, Tracy? Good evening. My name's Tracy Onslow and uh, I'm the Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner for West Mercia and have been for the last four years. Um, I've majored for John on commissioning, so that's buying in the services um, that help our uh, victims and our, um, our witnesses. And, um, and I've majored on community engagement as well. So events like this, um, plus those when we're actually able to be out and about. Excellent. Uh, thank you both and uh, uh, very grateful for you joining me uh, tonight. So just a bit of admin before we uh, get going. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see our normal communication message uh, during uh, this broadcast um, because usually we would seek to take your questions that you uh, pose, but I think Tracy can from, from her location. So I'll rely on Tracy if we get questions during them uh, to put them. Um, but uh, we have had some questions uh, in advance, uh, some to do with uh, road safety and some to do with drugs and uh, and uh, harm caused by drugs in our community but the first part of the discussion Steph I just wanted to touch on the quite extraordinary times that we live in and uh, three months or just over three months that we've been in quite stringent lockdown conditions um, we've seen our civil liberties impinge probably in the greatest way since uh, the second world war and a quite a testing time for society and of course for the police who are part of society and uh, I'm just interested in your views as to uh, reflections over the last three months and of course that was following the uh, significant flooding events that happened in the months before that so quite a start to 2020 and just interested in your views as the policing commander as to uh, the, the role of the public and how West Mercia have adapted. So 2020 has been an extremely challenging year. Um, as you said, it started off with the floods, significant flooding in South Worcestershire, moving on to the pandemic, the COVID-19, um, which we're still in. And then whilst that's been um, ongoing, we've had the Black Lives Matters demonstrations, the Extinction Rebellion demonstrations. And now we have reports of um, illegal gatherings, mass gatherings with music, which we call raves, which we thought was done and dusted back in the 90s, but has, uh, has come back. So going back to COVID-19 and our policing response, we have business con continuity plans in policing as they do in most large organizations to plan for all sorts of things. And the pandemic was one of those. Um, so it set us a good foundation for what we were gonna do with COVID-19. 
but there's not one person in this organisation has experienced um, this pandemic and, and, and the issues with it. So it's all been uh, learned through us with our professional judgment and, and, and planning really. And it's no underestimation to say that everything had to change um, in terms of our custody, in terms of our approaches with the public, in terms of our staffing, um, literally everything. As the pandemic continued over the months, we found that our traditional policing demand went down. And by that, I mean our burglaries, our violence against the person, our sexual offences. They all went down whilst we we're in the grip of this pandemic. What then went up was um, our antisocial behaviour. Um, and this isn't the antisocial behaviour that we might normally experience during, say, school holidays or during the nighttime economy. This was mainly COVID related. So these were generally reports of persons breaching the regulations and the guidance from the government in relation to COVID-19. In addition to the um, ASB, in my area alone, actually, we, we strangely had quite a, a spike in bike thefts um, because the government were encouraging people to use alternative ways of travel. Um, South Worcestershire is really good for cycling around. And I think part of that was lots and lots of people were taking up the habit um, of using their bike and maybe not securing it. So that was something that we had to deal with um, and we've been working towards and improving that situation. Our concern as the pandemic has continued has in particularly been in relation to our vulnerable people, our vulnerable adults um, and our vulnerable children. Um, it's, a, it's a concern that's shared with our partners because these people aren't out in the public that they normally would not getting the support that they might ordinarily without the pandemic. So the fortnight, we've been having fortnightly sa uh, safeguarding board meetings, which I've been attending, which is for the adults and the children with all of the agencies, uh, much like this really, not in person, by um, telephone conference, ensuring that the care and the processes are there and have been adapted in the, for the pandemic so that, that we ensure that the risk is minimized. Um, I think it's been publicised very much so in the media and through yourself and social media about our concerns with domestic abuse. Just the circumstances of the lockdown, we all feared this huge increase in domestic abuse. Um, it hasn't come as a steep peak, um, but it has, it has increased. Um, we had quite an escalation last week in terms of reports. Um, it steadied a bit this week, but that's all part of coming out of lockdown and that's th these people um, coming in contact with other people that can help and support them and are able and feel confident to report that and then we are taking those reports and dealing with them with our partners. So Steph, um, obviously it's uh, tested the organisation, it's good to hear the, the strategic. What about the local? How do you think it's felt for our communities on the ground and the difference in policing that they might or might not uh, have seen and that relationship, uh, you know, very grassroots level between your local teams and the public? So um, my local teams, the concern when we first started with our planning was that um, our resource levels uh, might be affected by the pandemic. Um, I'm delighted to say we've maintained um, very, very good resource levels throughout, which has assisted us in um, providing that confidence and that um, appearance to the public. So we've um, adapted our processes. So as our traditional demand has gone down, the officers have been retasked. Um, for a, a COVID patrol strategy. So in line with the reports we're getting from the public in terms of concerns and gatherings, but also just going out and being seen and able to have those conversations, um, we've had a lot more officers out and about. And these include um, officers that wouldn't ordinarily be walking the streets. So our CID officers have been back in uniform, working with their patrol colleagues, um, supporting this patrol strategy. And this is in line with the national policing approach, which was um, the four E's, which is uh, engage, explain uh, and encourage. And then the last E is enforce. And that's something that we haven't done that much of in South Worcestershire because we haven't needed to. Um, our communities have been absolutely brilliant, have been communicating with us and largely um, doing as the government guidance has said. And that for me is a, a, a key part is around the um, 
uh, I think the relationship between the police and the community could have, could have been tested during this time when we have our civil liberties removed and uh, we have a system that's based on policing by consent in this country and uh, I worried about that uh, being strained during lockdown but actually I've been really impressed with uh, local policing teams making very pragmatic decisions led uh, with a very clear strategy from the centre around that style and nature of that operation but that practical decision making on the ground encouraging engaging and only a very last minute last uh, resort enforcement I think has meant that that community effort that we've seen has been supported by the police and indeed I think that's the way the uh, the public would want it so for me I think that relationship with the police comes out of the first phase of lockdown um, with intact and indeed as strong as it as ever it, it should be um, Tracy, um, we obviously uh, have a huge number of communities out there uh, playing their part in supporting um, uh, each other. And I know uh, I've run a, um, a I've run a, a fund, a, a grant scheme to be able to support some of that work. Um, do you just want to touch on what kind of things that grant would have been used for in places like South Worcestershire? Yes, certainly. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, right at the start, actually, um, um, of all this happening back in March, um, you were very quick to notice that um, an awful lot of people came forward, and I think we saw it with the NHS when they were asking for volunteers. They were asking for sort of a couple of hundred thousand, and they got it overnight. Um, and that happened all throughout all our communities, South Worcestershire as well. And um, and I think people were somewhat overwhelmed with the amount of, of volunteers and you were very keen that where people had come forward straight away to offer their time you didn't want them to be out of pocket as well because actually when you have an awful lot of people to coordinate there can be a lot of um, you know masks were needed hand sanitizer printing um, leaflets to be delivered around to people's um, people's neighborhoods so you set up a fund and uh, it was it's just topped about fifty thousand pounds now that were given out to a number of um, local groups for those small items just to make sure that there wasn't anybody that was not only giving their time but giving money as well and the groups have I mean as people will have seen on the news the groups have been delivering newspapers getting prescriptions getting shopping for people um, anything really and um and, and the way that people have sort of got to know their neighbors they now know um who perhaps some of the more vulnerable people are in their in their areas and have been very quick to support and i think when people were thinking this might be a month they were very quick to come forward and we did think that after that time it would drop off and people would be you know starting to go back to work but it hasn't and people have stayed for the duration and helped out even up to now three months so it's been fantastic it's just about topped over fifty thousand pounds um in money and it has all gone on small little items which is uh, incredible just to help these groups so what kind of things tracy give give us some live examples of what kind of uh, what kind of things Oh, well, people have been uh, delivering newspapers to people who are shielding and can't go out. Um, they have been... Oh, no, sorry, I meant what kind of bits have we funded via the, via the fund? Oh, I'm sorry. So we've done um, protective equipment. So we've done masks and uh, gloves. We've done printing. We've done ID badges because obviously people are dealing with very vulnerable people. We wanted to make sure they knew who they were dealing with. Um, printing. Um, we've done um, bits of equipment that people have needed. So um, where they've perhaps needed um, access to Zoom, like we're using now, we've paid for some of those prescriptions. Anything really just to sort of grease those wheels to keep those volunteer groups going. Because that was one of the central bits for me, the amazing volunteer work that goes on out there without, uh, without uh, triumph or, uh, or without uh, fanfare. And for me, uh, that bit of support out there to make it happen, to make it less painful, I, I think has been really important. Um, mm -hmm. Steph, you've touched on it a little bit. Uh, we're, we're moving towards the weekend where the next phase of uh, our lockdown is being eased. Now, um, lots of people will be looking forward to a trip to the hairdressers or a trip to a cafe or a restaurant. Um, some, uh, I, for example, have been looking forward to a trip to the uh, swimming pool, but uh, uh, they're not opening at the weekend. But uh, some will have been looking forward to a trip to the pub. Um, obviously, during lockdown, we've seen uh, significant reductions in our nighttime economy and violence association uh, with it because it hasn't been there. Um, just talk a little bit about what your plans are for how um, our nighttime economy uh, gets going again and uh, the kind of things in place that, you, that you've organised. And second of all, what's the ask of the public as we start to get some of these freedoms back? 
Okay, so the nighttime economy um, returns this Saturday, the 4th of July, um, Independence Day in America. It's been viewed very much, um, I think, across the force of my colleagues as almost a New Year's Eve type event, but in July. Um, so the planning for that is we have um, what we would call a minor ops plan. Um, so we look at what we need to do, we make sure we have the, the right resources in order to achieve that. And the information we've got from that is by working with Worcester Regulatory Services who have the licensing responsibility. Um, and we have a licensing officer here within our harm hub. And together, we're trying to establish which of our um, significant nighttime economy, especially in Worcester City, was planning to reopen um, and, and essentially what their plans were so that we could adapt our response to that. What we've got back is that the vast majority of the premises in Worcester City um, and quite a lot in the other areas within South Worcestershire will be reopening on the 4th. Um, it's unrecognisable for what it was before, so this is in terms of entry fees, booking slots, table service. So we now have a solid understanding of which premises will open, uh, and I've ensured that we have suitable resources for that. And again, this is part of the South Worcestershire all in it together kind of approach that I have with the team here, in that I've got CID back in uniform, proactive CID back in uniform, working till three o'clock on Sunday morning to support their patrol colleagues because we really don't know, we do know who's opening, but the bit we don't know is, is actually what the public are going to do. Um, we don't know if they're gonna um, queue, uh, pay, or anything like that. So that's, it's very much an unknown to us. So I need to ensure we have suitable resources in order to deal with, with whatever happens on Saturday. Um, my appeal to the public um, for Saturday is, remember this pandemic is not over. Um, enjoy, that the restrictions are being um, lifted to some extent, but we all have a responsibility, you and I and everybody else, to ensure the safety of everybody around us. And you must remember there are some really nervous people out there with conditions, age, who've been isolating, who are genuinely fearful of this lockdown um, restrictions being lifted and the risk of a second wave of this pandemic. So just bear that in mind. Um, and I think what I would say to everybody is it is our and your personal responsibility to ensure that you um, act appropriately and safeguard those around you and show consideration. Because one of the central messages that uh, seem to be coming out is around, and it's very clear and simple advice around, uh, if distancing isn't possible, uh, please go elsewhere or go home. The, um, the, we, we all have a responsibility. Yes, the, all the, uh, the uh, establishments will have safe systems of, of working, but the responsibility actually is on us as the individual to make those choices, isn't it? If it doesn't feel like there is appropriate safety measures in place or they're not, or they're not properly operating, take that personal judgment yourself to, uh, to, 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 um, to make that choice to either move or to, uh, or to go home because um, it, it is going to be a, a shock. I can't quite believe it's three months uh, since all of these uh, premises closed or over three months and uh, it, it will be a, a, new, a new normal uh, or the next phase of the, the new normal. The other thing, uh, Steph, that um, people will have noticed during the lockdown is the dramatic reduction in vehicles on our roads. And uh, over the last few weeks, we, we've gradually seen that starting to um, increase. Um, Tom, from uh, uh, who's put a question in advance, um, asks around uh, during lockdown and those restrictions, we have seen perhaps cyclists uh, take uh, more of a, uh, a dominant role on our roads. Um, and he refers to things like Operation Close Pass, which is uh, an operation around um, ensuring that uh, vehicles take a, a wide berth when they're passing cyclists. Um, and uh, interested in your plans in South Worcestershire about how you're going to improve uh, uh, safety uh, for, for those cyclists who might not have been cycling before lockdown. So um, that, that initiative um, is, is just a small part of, of, of what goes on Operation Close Pass. So in terms of South Worcestershire, there haven't been any Close Pass initiatives this year um, because of the floods and because of COVID. It's certainly something that we, we've looked to, um, to uh, implement once the restrictions allow us to. What we have been doing though, because Safer Roads is part of our priorities in West Mercia Police, is we've had a speeding campaign um, the week before last 
in which um, South Worcestershire fared very well in terms of the um, activity that we supported for that. Uh, this week and next week, we've got a seatbelt campaign. Um, and this is all about safety and this is all about personal responsibility, ensuring that everybody is safe on the roads. Only last week, I met with the manager from the uh, road safety team. Um, so they are the people that manage all the speed cameras um, and the enforcement vehicles. And we've had a very good meeting to try and coordinate our, our efforts and our, um, our concentration towards the right things that are concerns for the community. So that department have some concerns fed to them. I have concerns fed to me. I know that you also have some speeding and other road traffic concerns fed to you. And what I'm trying to improve is between us is to get that coordination in place so actually we are um, putting our efforts towards the places where the community have the most concern specifically to cycle um, cycle issues i know um, having spoken to my partners in the council that um, the government were um, providing some funding to support some of the cycle initiatives um, and i am aware that worcestershire um, county council have put a bid in for that and are have received some funding so they'll be looking to implement um, some um, some things in, in in the future but I don't know what those look like at the moment. Okay um, just talking about the role of West Mercia Police for a start though um, Steph what kind of things would should the community expect your local policing teams because all communities have got a, a safe neighbourhood team um, an identifiable safe neighbourhood team of a PC and some PCSOs what kind of things would they be normally doing in their community to support uh, bike safety? Uh, you know, things like in schools, um, visible out, doing speed enforcement, engaging um, with different groups and all those kind of things. That's all still happening in lockdown, isn't it? Yeah, so we just, like I said right at the beginning of this, we've had to adapt our approach to everything and, and this included. So, yes, normally we would be in schools doing um, road safety, bike safety. Um, clearly, there's not as many pupils in there, but there are still the products available to them. Um, we do speeding enforcement. So we have um, both officers and um, community support officers that are able to do the speed enforcement. We have community speed watch that supports them. And, and that's our own community doing that and able to give some warning notices. So there, there's a whole raft of things. And then working with the road safety unit, which is the people I was speaking about a moment ago, they have the ability to put some monitoring equipment in place. And that allows us to sort of get an idea of whether or not there is actually an issue uh, in a location, whether that's a, a real issue or whether that's a perception, which means that we can tailor our response and make sure our resources are being used in the right way and in the right place so that we get the right effect, which is to make everybody safer uh, and making our roads safer. One of, uh, uh, and uh, I've re-established comms with our, uh, with our comms network to take the live uh, questions. And uh, uh, Tom, who asked the question, uh, was very keen to be part of that support. So um, there are groups such as Bike Worcester who do want to support you and your colleagues in improving road safety, absolutely. It's not just one person's job it, or one organisation's job. It's lots of organisations working, working together. But uh, what would you say, just uh, very briefly, to uh, those uh, cyclists out there who don't feel safe on the roads? Uh, what kinds of things can they do to help play a part in improving, improving safety? Uh, things like, uh, I'm thinking about specifically about Operation Snap and those kind of things. So Operation Snap um, is the dash cam initiative. So I know that a lot of the and you can use GoPro. You can yeah, use GoPro have it on, contributions. Have it on their head um, and record it for the, for these circumstances, really. So they, if they do see any um, behaviour from motorists or anybody else, for that matter, and, and they record it on their dash cam, there is the ability via Operation Snap, which is on the West Mercia website, where they can upload that and they can actually make a complaint uh, in relation to the the behaviour that they've experienced. But in terms of their own safety, they again, we'll go back to personal responsibility. They have a responsibility themselves, these cyclists, to make sure that they are riding their bike responsibly. They're not um, undercutting or doing anything like that. And that they're visible so that people can see them. That's not only clothing, but that's also lighting. Um, in terms of engagement, I know that we on Twitter, our Safe Enables teams in Worcester 
have engaged with some of these cycle groups um, because we actually had a good result um, yesterday where, as I said earlier, we've had some cycle thefts in Worcester um, and we've had a number of operations, but yesterday we had some really good success where we arrested one person. We have uh, recovered three stolen bikes uh, yesterday and we've recovered a further one today. And so that allows us to engage with some of the community because they're, they're clapping about this, and they're happy about this. And this is about the security. So we do have some cycle marking events uh, in, in, in the normal world and we'll seek to put those in place again to ensure that everybody knows that part of the issue with our, when we recover bikes is that we can't track who owns them. So getting those marked is really, really important. Um, and that's great to hear about uh, some of that success uh, around um, catching those that want to pinch bikes because uh, that's a key part in making sure that people can cyclists not to lose their equipment. Um, I just want to move on, Steph, if I can, to more traditional crime. So um, during lockdown, you mentioned we saw a reduction in crime types uh, uh, nearly across the board, but some, some we have seen um, uh, not go down. Um, one of the questions we've had in from Adele is around um, drug dealing and antisocial behaviour. They, uh, they give a, a postcode WR3, which is uh, an area uh, around Worcester. Um, and, and, and I suppose the, that question, the more general question is, um, crime hasn't stopped during, during COVID, crime's changed during COVID, I think. And just interesting as a, a bit of normality starts to get going again, um, shops being open will mean that we'll see more shoplifting naturally and all those kind of things. What it is you're doing, on, on a, that the public will see um, to help make sure that we're tackling very high harm causing activities such as drug dealing. So WR3 covers um, sort of Worcester, Clanes, Hinlip and Fernal Heath, for those people that don't know what WR3 refers to. Um, I would say that during the pandemic, although the demand has gone down in traditional policing, our activity has been maintained throughout. As I've said earlier, we've had really healthy numbers of um, patrol and um, Safer Neighbours team resources who have continued to tackle um, all of the issues that Adele has raised in relation to drug dealing and antisocial behaviour. So I'll give you an example. Um, I, the drug dealing, a lot, a lot of it is to do with county lines, which I think is a term some people, will, most people will be familiar with. In the last year, as an example, um, the, our proactive team who are dedicated to this drug dealing network have dealt with over 80 suspects and they've recovered over £30,000 worth uh, of cash. They've also recovered some weapons, which include machetes, CS and tasers. This week alone, responding to calls from the public, and they are the key to this, um, we've made six arrests in Worcester and Evesham. So we are tackling it. We're working really, really hard. Um, and that's sort of the end result where we've got the criminality. We're also going from sort of the other end in terms of the exploitation. And in South Worcestershire, in Worcestershire as a whole, we have... Uh, Get Safe, which I'm the chair of, and Get Safe stands for, I have to read this out, gangs, sexual exploitation, trafficking, uh -huh. modern day slavery, absent or missing, forced marriage, criminal uh, exploitation. And this is about um, these, these essentially kids that are doing this drug dealing, they didn't start off doing that, and Get Safe is, is part of that, is to try and get in earlier to divert that activity and understand why they end up getting involved with this. Um, so the Get Safe Operational Group have now got a reporting portal that allows us to gather with our partners and share the information. This will give us an analytical product, which means that we can focus our activity. And I know that um, the PCC's office have funded um, a diversionary screen, uh, scheme called CLIMB. So all of these things go towards tackling those elements of drug dealing and ASB, not just in WR3, but across South Worcestershire. John? Yes, Tracy. Thanks. Um, just on that point, actually, around um, that Steph was saying about they've had a lot of interesting information coming from the public, because um, one of the points around um, sort of the coming out of lockdown is that um, I know you're going to try and run a campaign to keep that community spirit there, because whatever happens, there will never be a police officer next door to every single house, but there will nearly always be a neighbour. And it's just that point around, you know, you know who your vulnerable people are now, so you know where they are. If you hear anything or see anything um, that isn't right, just take that five minutes to think 
is that the right thing that's happening? And if it isn't, then that's something that you should be phoning in on 101. Obviously, if it's life threatening, you do 999, but certainly on 101. And, and I think, um, you know, Steph would agree that the police are never going to not want to hear that information. You know, even if it just builds a picture and they can't do something about it straight away then, it's about getting that information, isn't it? There's, there's more ways than ever now to tell us about this sort of thing. There are so many ways to report it. You know, we have got the 101, but we've also got the online um, home reporting, which you can do off the internet. So, and if people aren't confident and they don't want, you know, they're nervous about uh, leaving their details, which we fully understand, um, then there's Crime Stoppers. And I can assure everybody that Crime Stoppers absolutely is confidential and we never find out who is reported. But it's a really, really valuable source of information to us. So, Steph, what would be... So uh, Adele or, or other people in South Worcestershire who think there's drug dealing in their community or, or things that they don't like, um, what, what, would they, uh, what should they do? So what kind of routes are open to them? Uh, and how would they, for example, if it's not a live crime there and then, it is just concerns, how, for example, would they talk to your local dedicated officers that are just for their geographic area, for example? So if they go onto the West Mercia uh, website, um, if they go onto there, that will identify um, their local policing team. And on that site is the contact details for that team. Um, there is also um, on that website, we'll advertise in the normal world, non-pandemic world, we also have community engagement events. Of course, those aren't taking place at the moment, but as soon as we are allowed to, we will have those. So that's another opportunity. But at the moment, you know, with my healthy teams out there, they are doing lots of walking and engaging and talking. And they are out there, and, uh, and I'm sure you'll come across them. You wouldn't have to look too far. So getting in touch is key, as Tracy said. Uh, if there's something you don't like, report it. If you think there's something happening there, and then report it. And if there is that wider discussion, make contact with your local team and uh, and uh, and chat it chat it through. I think they they are very clear because in South Worcestershire, like the rest of West Mercia, the the policing teams are slowly growing. There is more of us than there was uh, a couple of years ago. And I want to make sure as commissioner that we, the community, absolutely see that improvement in being safe, but also, of course, feeling safe, because that's the other key, uh, key important, uh, important part. And the other thing I just wanted to touch on, and we have touched on it, it, it kind of, is around those that might be vulnerable in our community, um, vulnerable to scams, say, or vulnerable as a child to being exploited, either in criminality or, or sexually, or those older persons who might be vulnerable to being uh, abused. So I'm just interested in in your take on uh, on what we need to do in, uh, in 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 South Worcestershire and what you are doing in South Worcestershire to help sure people are safe. Well, I think again, I'll say out to the public. You know, now that we've had this pandemic, um, and as Tracy says, we forming those relationships, and we we are, I would say, a more caring society, looking out for our neighbours then properly look out for them and let, and let that continue. So if you have concerns about them being exploited or taking advantage of, then talk to us and tell us about it. You know, it, it, it is a real threat. So in terms of the domestic abuse, there are plenty of signposts to try and get that help. And I think you can find that quite easily if you go on the internet. But if you have somebody with those concerns, you know, have a, a conversation with them and encourage them to seek help because that's what we need them to do. And it's the same with um, other vulnerable adults. So we talked about, I think you touched on fraud. So there's been a lot in the media about the um, financial fraud of some people, um, actually COVID related. So these fraudsters are really adaptable in the way that they approach these frauds. So pr prior to the pandemic, there was a lot of them pretending to be police officers, um, investigating a, um, some other crime. They are now adapting that to COVID saying that they need this money in order to have a test. So got to be really, really cautious now. Um, talk to the people that, you know, that might be vulnerable and just remind them, remind them, remind them that it doesn't feel quite right. It probably isn't. And there's no rush. So if it is us, we really won't mind if you ask us to ring back, come at another time, show our identification, any of those things. So that's what you need to do in order to stay safe.
that's a really good bit of advice around if it doesn't feel right it, it often isn't and uh, that mo few moments check can be the difference between falling victim or not uh, and the other thing uh, i just wanted to reiterate is around the support out for those that might not feel safe in their own homes if you're the uh, victim or, or of domestic abuse or know somebody that might be there is help out there um, and indeed, it doesn't always have to be the police. There are ways to get help and support uh, through lots of the voluntary sector that's in uh, in Worcestershire that I, I fund. And indeed, we provide the links on my website, on West Mercia Police's website, or if you put in uh, domestic abuse um, uh, support into your search engine. In, uh, there's lots of online stuff and I've been really impressed uh, Tracy with how some of those uh, voluntary sector organizations have adapted during Covid as we've had to alter how we engage uh, with those that need the support. Yes yeah, certainly and they've um, you know for a lot of those services when they are offering that sort of support and counselling it is very much focused on face to face for obvious reasons because you are you know you, you people need that that interaction um, and uh, you know we have supplied uh, through the government funding laptops for people zoom registrations etc so that they can still have that they can still see somebody um they, it's been extended we've got more people out there um i think uh, to to a certain extent um the 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 um the size of the increase fortunately wasn't what we thought it was going to be but the, the help is there it's the usual numbers um, so you know if anything is happening to you uh, don't think that it's all shut down it isn't um, they will be starting to bring back some more face-to-face -face now obviously more socially distanced but they are available on the phone they are available through zoom and they have got the kit um, to be able to do that and I think I'd, yeah, I'd just want to add, if I may yeah. um, it's not over you know this pandemic isn't over people are still in their homes they should be safe but some of them are not so take advantage of those opportunities when you see these people just to check on them and just to make sure and if they're not encourage them and signpost them towards where help is because there's plenty of it available and for me that's a, a really good message to uh, to, to, to wrap up on and uh, uh, Steph I'm incredibly grateful for you joining uh, us tonight um, and for the general public who uh, from South Worcestershire who put their questions for us to us to discuss if anybody did want to submit a question uh, that they haven't been able to um, then please do either comment on the article below or, or uh, submit a question uh, via our email or, or, or other channels and we'll seek to get you an answer um, and uh, for me uh, Steph thank you very much for spending some time talking about uh, policing in uh, South Worcestershire and uh, Tracy thank you as well for joining us and uh, I'd like to wish everybody uh, a good evening and uh, please do stay safe.